COVID-19 forced school building closures earlier this year as nearly two in five students in the district do not have access to reliable high-speed internet at home. Starting in 2021, Starlink will connect up to 45 households in the community as part of the pilot program. And as the network capabilities continue to grow, it will then expand service to an additional 90 households in the school district. Our Starlink network is still in its early stages, but if you're interested in receiving future updates on Starlink news and service availability in your area, visit Starlink.com. We're currently at T minus three and a half minutes from liftoff and Falcon 9 is heading down the final stretch of the terminal countdown. The first and second stages are almost fully loaded with one million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. First stage prop loading will wrap up at T minus three minutes in about 20 seconds here and second stage will complete at T minus two minutes. And you will see some venting of the locks out of the transporter erector uh, or the TE. And that's when the super chilled liquid oxygen mixes with the much warmer ambient air. It does create those white clouds. You can kind of see that on your screen around Falcon 9 right now. At T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9's complete. And there's uh, the locks load completion call out. At T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9's autonomous internal flight computers will take over the terminal count. And this is what we call startup. Basically, that means that the rocket is in charge of making the, the decisions as long as the launch director is go for launch. And at this time, the Starlink payload continues to be healthy. Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the rocket. Weather is still looking good. We're still keeping an eye out on it, but weather is still looking good for T0. And the range is green for launch. Coming up here at T minus two minutes. We should be completing locks loading here shortly. I'm just sitting here. Again, as I mentioned earlier, those white clouds that you see around Falcon 9 is from the venting of the LOX line. And this is normal. Complete. There's that call out for stage two LOX load complete. Again, those white clouds are normal that you see there on your screen. It's so beautiful. You and me. Just 30 starting. 30 seconds away from Falcon 9 being in startup. Again, that's when the internal flight computers take over the terminal count. And now you can really see that venting of the locks there from the, the transporter erector. This is to clear out the lines uh, on the TE in preparation for liftoff. Falcon 9 is in startup. There's that call out, the Falcon 9 is in startup. In about 10 seconds here, we should hear if we are go for launch. LD is go for launch. And you heard that the LD is go for launch. So it looks like weather is in our favor today. So at T minus 30 seconds, let's listen into the terminal count and watch as Falcon 9 takes our 60 Starlink satellites into orbit today. Stage one tank pressing for flight. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Mission. And we have lift off.
plus 40 seconds into liftoff. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, carrying our Starlink payload out into space. Now we just throttled down the engines in preparation for max Q, which stands for maximum aerodynamic pressure. This is the largest structural load that the vehicle will see throughout ascent. Should be coming up on max Q in a few seconds here. Max Q. And there's that call out that we just passed through max Q. In about a minute, we will have three events that happen very quickly one after another. That will be MECO, or main engine cutoff, stage separation, and SES-1, or second engine start one. And main engine cutoff is where all nine of those M1D engines shut down, slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage separation, which is when the first stage separates from the second stage. After stage separation is SES-1, or second engine start one. And this is where the MVAC engine lights up for its first burn and propels the second stage along with the Starlink satellites to orbit. And at T plus two minutes, we are about 30 seconds away from those three events. Again, that's MECO, stage separation, and SES-1. Again, it's SES-1 because we do have two burns of the Merlin vacuum engine on today's mission. We have a beautiful view of the first stage. Stage separation confirmed. And there you just watched Miko, main engine cutoff, stage separation, and that second stage engine ignite. We're just about 15 seconds here from fairing deploy. And on your right hand screen, you can see a view of inside of those fairing halves, looking at the Starlink payload as well. And on your left hand screen is first stage, making its way back to Earth. Bearing separation confirmed. And there, as you watch on your screen, that is confirmation that those fairing halves have deployed. And as a reminder, we will be attempting to pick up the fairing halves after they touch down on the water with our recovery vessel, Miss Chief, today. Now with stage two well on its way to orbit, stage one is now heading back to Earth and will perform two burns on its way down. Acquisition of signal Bermuda. The first is the entry burn to assist in slowing the vehicle down as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. This will be a three engine burn starting off with the center E9 engine and followed not too long after by two additional engines reigniting. Then the second and final burn for the first stage will be the landing burn, which is just a single E9 engine. And that is enough to rapidly slow down the vehicle to allow it to touch down on its landing zone. And again, for today, the landing zone is just read the instructions, which is currently out in the middle of the ocean waiting for this booster to come back. Stage two is looking good and nominal got a nice view of that MVAC engine on your right hand screen. Stage two is taking our Starlink payload to its targeted orbit and these 60 Starlink satellites will join the constellation already on orbit which is which are designed to provide high speed low latency internet to people here on Earth and especially to places where good internet is really hard to access. It's just after T plus five minutes so we're just about a minute away from the entry burn beginning on the first stage. Entry burn will be. Trajectory. There's a call out. The vehicle uh, second stage is on nominal trajectory. So that entry burn will last about 22 seconds long. And you can see on your left hand screen the first stage, the grid fins are deployed uh, and air the, to be flowing through those grid fins.
Got some really awesome clear views on both the first and second stage. You can see Earth in the background. We're just about 15 seconds or so away from that entry burn on the first stage. Stage one FTS is saved. Stage one entry burn zero. And there you can see the entry burn has begun. And as you saw, the plume started out small and then got larger, and that's because we light up the first single engine and then followed by two additional engines on this entry burn for a total of three. Stage one entry burn shut down. And entry burn is now complete, as you see those engines have shut down. So next up, in about a minute or so, will be that landing burn for the first stage. And as I mentioned earlier, it will just be the center. All nominal trajectories. It will just be the center E9 engine for the landing burn, and that's enough thrust to slow the vehicle down. The it was a very clear and beautiful day over there in Florida, so hopefully we get a nice, beautiful view of first stage landing. Stage one landing burn. Stage one landing burn. There's confirmation, stage one landing burn. You can kind of see that burn kind of shaking the camera there. Stage one landing leg deploy. Go. Stage one landing. <laughs> and we had a little bit of a rough camera view there, but the Falcon has landed on our drone ship for its third landing on Just Read the Instructions. This marks our 63rd successful recovery of a Falcon first stage and the 11th for Just Read the Instructions. And looks amazing as we can see it there now, standing stably there. Lost the signal, Cape. Now we're waiting on your right-hand screen for Seco 1, which is second engine cutoff 1. There's that call out for Seco. We're waiting for confirmation of good orbit here. Nominal parking orbit insertion. And there is that call out that we are in a good orbit. So now this and we did get those call outs for SES2 and SECO2. It was a very quick burn, just two seconds long. Now we're waiting for confirmation of good orbit. Oh, there it is. And there you, you saw on your screen um, that SES2 and SECO2 happen very quick. We're looking at on your screen, that is the stack of 60 Starlink satellites right there in front of us. It looks like we're getting a little glare from the sun there as well. That is because the second stage is rotating a little bit on its central axis to give the satellites momentum as they deploy. It's so beautiful, you and me. We meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free. Starlink satellites have successfully deployed from second stage. What an awesome view, sunlight hitting those Starlink satellites. And right there, we just watched the final deployment for SpaceX's 100th successful mission. How exciting and what an incredible milestone to reach. What an awesome view as well. 
The Starlink satellites will soon deploy their single solar array, and over the course of a few weeks, they will distance themselves from each other and use their onboard ion thrusters powered by Krypton to make their way to their operational orbit.